I recently purchased a few additional items for the Analog Discovery 2 that I own. Uh, they're also useful with the original Analog Discovery, which I also have one of. Among them was this impedance analyzer add-on board. If you recall, a few months ago I did a couple of videos on the impedance analyzer function in waveforms, but at the time I did not have this add-on board. It makes things much more convenient, but understand you can do everything with the impedance analyzer without this board. What this board does is it makes things uh, much easier because it basically allows you to automatically switch resistor values, and I'll talk about that in a minute when I show you the uh, waveform software. But what you see here is the board installed on the Analog Discovery 2, and then a resonant circuit, that is a, a ferrite core with a, a winding on it, and I don't know the characteristics of this, I could find out, but uh, it basically was a core that was just laying in my uh, junk box and some magnet wire I had, so I just wound as many turns on it as I could and then connected it to this capacitor, which was also in the same junk box. So it's just a random inductor and a random capacitor. But one of the nice things about this impedance analyzer is it allows you to analyze networks like this. And as I say, I'll show you that in waveforms for a second. The uh, On the bench at the same time, I have a a chart that I've been using out of Allies Electronics Data Handbook. I've mentioned this before as well. You can find this online. It's a very handy source of all kinds of electronics uh, charts, formulas, graphs, and so on. And what I've been doing is using this uh, ruler to sort of plot uh, the approximate frequency, capacitance, and inductance of LC circuits. I've been playing around with a few. The uh, You may see in the uh, tray up there a couple of other inductors and another uh, capacitor and some other, some other things I've been working on. And then over to the right is the uh, another recent addition let me slide this up just a little bit, or over. I saw these and they were uh, on sale for a fairly good price at the, on the DigitalNet website. So I bought two of the uh, adapters that allow you to connect the analog discovery down to a breadboard. It has uh, a number of advantages. And by the way, maybe this is a good time for me to mention that I have no connection with uh, Digilant or the Analog Discovery or their their parent uh, National or any of these. Uh. Instead, all of this I buy from Digilant. The, uh, I do sometimes get the academic price, but, but I don't get anything free and it's generally my uh, policy not to take any items from manufacturers simply because it's not that, that I really think that that's uh, unethical or uh, whatever. It's just that to me, since I can afford to buy this uh, stuff and it's not that expensive, I'd rather do that than uh, have someone question whether my reviews are, are uh, independent or not. So what does this little adapter do for you that you can't otherwise do with wires? Well, nothing, actually, because you, what you can do is use the fly wires from the analog discovery. Here's an example of a fly wire with uh, the pins on the end, and you can hook those to uh, a breadboard. But the nice thing about this is you can hook the analog discovery here 
and perhaps in a future video I'll show this actually in use. And it gives you the call out of all the pins here. One of the problems with the analog discovery header is while it's color coded, it doesn't have any other uh, description of what's what. Now there is a, a description on the analog discovery itself. So you can match up, for example, the, the two orange wires that are on this end are the channel one uh, scope input the orange and orange white wires so but the nice thing about this is it has them written again here so you don't have to keep looking at the analog discovery and so you can put jumper wires from this to your circuit so I have one here that I bought and it's just the regular one and then I bought one that also comes with or includes this uh, plug-in cable. You see here that it plugs in and there's a header that comes with this uh, board so you can uh, change from a, from a female to a male and then this extension cable which fits right on there and I'm not going to push it down all the way because I want to be able to get a screwdriver in there to pull it apart again. And then on the other end is the uh, connector that connects to the analog discovery. So the idea is that you can plug this onto your breadboard in that fashion and then this plugs into your analog discovery and it can be over uh, a little ways away from the uh, from the breadboard. The breadboard I also bought from Digital. Once again, they were selling this for about the same price that you can buy a comparable breadboard from places like Mauser. So I went ahead and got this as well. Okay, enough about uh, about buying stuff from Digital. How about this new impedance analyzer add-on board? This is the waveform software and I have selected the impedance analyzer. Let me show you how you do that in case you're not uh, familiar with that. I'm going to close this window. Down in the lower right hand corner here you see impedance. You click on impedance and it fires up a window. Now this is just reopening the old window but you, you'll get a window. You then select a resistor value and here is where the board comes in handy. You may be able, probably can't hear the click, but when you click on a new resistor value, a relay is engaged to automatically connect that resistor into the network. Once again, you may not hear that, but it, it is uh, selecting a resistor value. Now I've determined that a 10K resistor works pretty well for this little resonant circuit. And let's now run it. And we are running it at a volt of amplitude from 1 kilohertz to 1 megahertz. And I'm just going to run it once. You see the typical parallel resonant circuit, that is, the highest impedance is at the resonant frequency. And it also is where the phase changes, in this case from around plus 90 degrees to closer to minus 90 degrees. In other words, it goes from inductive to capacitive at the resonant frequency. Now, these little anomalies here are undoubtedly due to stray uh, events including perhaps some uh, stray signals that are coming in. My my workbench is nowhere near a, an electromagnetic free environment and so you can sort of expect these sorts of things to happen. That doesn't necessarily mean that the device you're working with has this kind of characteristic. It's probably more or less uh, smooth from here to here. Similarly from here on out it's similarly smooth. Although it does look like it has a little bit of a second uh, phase 
change here. And the reason that I suspect that that's real is it, it's reflected up here as well. So this is the impedance analyzer add-on board. And once again, as I say, this is something new that I've added that is a supplement to a couple of earlier videos I did. I'm hoping to use this for a variety of interesting experiments in the future, but for right now, I just thought I'd show you about this since I recently got it. Hope that if you haven't bought an analog discovery by now, that you find it uh, in your budget and interest to do so. Not that I get anything out of it. I don't have an Amazon store or, or uh, anything. But uh, I do think it's a really nice little instrument for somebody like a student in a dorm who has a computer and would just like to do some electronic experiments without buying a bench full of oscilloscopes and waveform generators and other things like that. As I've said in the past, the analog discovery, in my opinion, is the best combination of instruments for a student, perhaps a, a double E student in their junior or senior year, or, or perhaps a graduate student. But check out my videos on the analog discovery, and you might also look at some other people's videos. El Paso Tube Amps has done some. Uh, uh, Craig Hollibaugh, I think is his name, has a channel uh, called The Valve Studio, I believe. He's done some, and uh, EEV Blog, various places on the uh, YouTube and the Internet where you can check this thing out. But I've been having fun with it. I hope that you can too. And, and in the long run, I hope you'll be able to learn a little from this and perhaps from some of my videos. In the meantime, hope you have a nice day.